blueprint and discover what God is saying concerning us, the church, and concerning creation. Because the church is supposed to be a testimony to creation of God's goodness. Men are supposed to see what? Our good works. And do what? Glorify the church. Oh, okay. Glorify the Father that's in heaven. So men are supposed to see this thing. That's why we have to be at the top. You tell your neighbor, we got to be at the top. Yeah, we got to be at the top. We got to be tip top shape. Come on now. We got to be a people of discipline. People of structure, people of order. That means, see, that's how you rise up. That's how you get exalted. That's how you get established. You know, anything, you know, NBA, people get drafted in the NBA. I think they said it's 30, what is it, 318? Somebody help me out. It's 30 teams. I think it's 15, yeah, I think it's 15 players to a team. And that's all that makes it. Every year. Some undrafted, some drafted. But the, there are certain qualities and characteristics that stands out. You can get drafted. Can you make the team? Can you make the cut? And normally 15 of them make the cut. And that's what I'm thinking about. Just think about, can we make the cut? They all had the same ability. They didn't have the same ability, but they had the same opportunity. And we all had the same opportunities. Some of us just can't make the cut. We want, we'd rather go around the mountain. Mm -hmm. He told him to do the running. He said, how long are you going to be at this mountain? Yes. How long are we going to remain at that mountain? It ain't time, and, and, and you can only speak to the mountain so many times. Right. Mm -hmm. We need to rise above it. And we need to be in a position so, so secure, so steadfast, so unmovable, always abounding. I know somebody said it earlier. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. That is what God wants us to become. Amen? Amen. Amen. At the top. <clears throat> and the reason for all that, the reason why the Father wants to do something with us, the reason why he brought us out of high levels of dysfunction, be it some of the things we've incurred on ourselves, right? Because just living, your pre-birth, before you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have baggage. And you've acquired certain things. Am I, am I right? Am I talking to the right people? And since you've been saved, you've acquired a few things. And if you've been a part of a church system, you, 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 you know, you're probably hoarding at this point. And, and there are certain things we've held on to and we've cleaved to that have been inconsistent with what God's eternal purpose has been for the church. It has been. When we look at the church and we see what God has spoken concerning the church and it's not, it has not been a match made in heaven. And we don't get exempt from that equation. Because most folks, when they come to join a church like this and, and then you get exposed to certain teachings and then you go back to study and find out to be true and then there's a witness in your spirit of such teaching, then it has you... You have an opportunity to be a little bit self-righteous because God spared you. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, you got it twisted. Yeah. Am I right? God, did, he did spare you. Mm -hmm. But he spares you because there's an objective in him yes. putting his favor on you, yes. circumcising your ears, mm -hmm. putting you in a position to be exposed to a different level of understanding. Mm -hmm. And he didn't do it just because, you know, you know, you you know, you the fourth cousin or the, the guy here or anything. <laughs> but of course he did it because he wanted to bring something into your bloodline. Yes. We already know that. Yes. That's the reason why he brought us out, to bring us in. But he said, but I the thing that got me this morning, I said, I don't, I don't even think I'm going to go into everything on next Sunday. But please understand this. He wants to build something with the house of the Lord. And within the context of what he's constructing, it has to be adjacent to the mountain. And we said the mountain is what? 
the kingdom of God. I ain't going to let you mess that up. So he wants the kingdom of God to become the focal point mm -hmm. of the house of the Lord. Amen. Then the kingdom of God, kingdom of God must, become must become the focal point, the focal point of, the Lord's house. of the Lord's house. See, see, because we're looking around and seeing certain things going on and we, we, we you know, and there's some systems that be that is coming up against us that and challenging us and putting you know some pressure on our understanding but you know and God is trying to update us and upgrade us in our understanding and, and bring in, in a, a new reformation reframing us not just a reformation but reframing our thinking so that we can house the information that's necessary not just your general information not just a conundrum of historical things that we read in scriptures, but I'm talking about where the Holy Spirit is blowing over the text you've read before sure. and putting a fresh incentive for you to build your life constructively. Amen? Amen. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Because you do know that. That's what you come here to get. You, you, you do know that you're being brought here to be built, to be constructed yes. something yes. in his energy to life, yes. right? Yes. And he's doing it with a collective consciousness, right? So you're not just freelancing. Amen. He wants to engraft you. Just can't sing it up here and not say it. And they will sing it prophetically. He wants to engraft us. He wants to include us as a corporate spirit, right? In this house. And we got and they won't allow us to get to that to that apex, to that level of understanding, because we have to relinquish some former ties. And there has been some things that have been imposed on us. There has been some theology that's antiquated. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Because I'm not going to talk about it, come let us yet. I'm going to hit that because that's part. But that message is not coming into the house of his choosing is being built in the mountain. And see, we're waiting on people to flood our doors. And we think that most of humanity is scared because of what's coming on the earth. Amen? We saw that in what, uh, what that, Y2K. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, didn't we see that in the year 2000? Mm -hmm. We thought the temperature was right. <laughs> Am I right? We saw it. Yes, sir. We had standing room only at our church. Yes, sir. Well, after 9-11, folks were like, Pfft. Before that, matter of fact, not 9-11, because we had it twice. 9-11, mm -hmm. and before that, when Y2K came, yep. when everybody was getting water. And, food. <laughs> and saying, you know, everybody, you know, all the philosophers, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> philosophers, <laughs> were saying in 1999, saying, we ain't going to make it across in 2000. Mm -hmm. I told my wife, we're going to sit right here. <laughs> she said, what are we going to get? We're going to get anything? Yeah, we'll get, get some water if you want. <laughs> yeah, I ain't heard God say nothing. They were selling it though on the highway. Ain't gonna say the church. <laughs> they had the old survival kit for you, one hundred forty-nine dollars. Wow! You make it to two thousand, you get this. And it was selling out. I had no pressure, absolutely none. Amen. I didn't get an extra box of rice or nothing. <laughs> I might have. Right. <laughs> water, and we got about four jugs of water. Four jugs of water. I wasn't sweating, and I did it because you know, because you know, pressure in the house. You know, I was good. I, was, I mean, hey, I knew they were talking about missiles going off and and, and all kind of stuff. Yeah, cell gates coming open. People gonna get out of their cell. I guess they thought it was an old. Old Jubilee coming, and it still didn't get out, right? <laughs> yeah, both literal and spiritual. So, but I, I, and I feel that way, but most of the church, we're still antiquated. We're still antiquated in our theology. We haven't moved on. And because people tell us, ain't nothing new under the sun. And that, that put fear on us. And we're so, and most, and most of the church were so, so deceived into making sure that they don't get to see. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Got to try to spare, try to spare. They ain't even what the scripture said. It just said try to spare. We just add the other part on there. It 
said, try the spirit, see if it's like God. That's it. There ain't no try the spirit by the spirit. Well, we just take everything we hear. And like good parents, that's what we say. But I'm here to tell you, our hearts must be set on the pilgrims. As a church that's progressive, as a church that got its ear to the heart of the Father, and is allowing God to speak into the very fiber of who we are, and allow Him to create a tapestry that can endure the test of time, we got to make up our mind and say we're going to be at the top. When God wants to do anything in the earth, I want to be sensitive to what God is doing in the earth. Come on now. Amen. I don't want to hear it by hearsay. I want to be able to hear the voice of the Lord. Right? In, you know what I'm saying? I, man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I believe God wants us to be in tune in the spirit. And, that, and, and when, you, when you like that and you know that you need to be at the top, you understand that, that you're a trendsetter. That you're a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Amen? And there's going to be some things, some teaching that other churches may not have access to. Or may not, maybe it's not their grace. Mm -hmm. But us, those that God has called to be at the top. And that don't mean we're haughty and we're arrogant. It means that God has given us, he has assigned a position to us. And that we're receptive to whatever God is saying about where we need to be. Amen? Amen. As it relates to how we raise our family. As it relates to how we handle our money. That's the top two. Come on now. Y'all think it's top on Sundays and Wednesdays? No, no, no. Your life, everything about you must come to the top. We're going to be the mountain of the Lord's house. If we're going to achieve a certain status in the spirit realm, not just in the earth as far as what men are going to say about us, but there's a message as we're constructing our lives, as we are hearing the scriptures, as we walk in the realms of obedience as what God is saying. See, you, you can't see with your physical eyes. There's another kingdom, right, that is an operation. <clears throat> Kingdoms of darkness, but as believers, as people who are at the top, we we have to pave the way. We have to raise the bar. We have to set the standard. 